concept actually this concept you have to understand well because its applications are found in the higher classes today i am going to explain the degrees of freedom of a gaseous molecules i will share my screen So look here, degrees of freedom of gaseous molecules. The motion of the gaseous molecules in various modes and in various directions. They are called the degrees of freedom. Actually, the degrees of freedom, it is defined as the independent number of parameters required to describe the state of the molecule completely. What is the total number of the parameters required to describe the state of the molecule completely? It is called a degrees of freedom. See, when you are heating a gaseous substance, the gaseous molecules will absorb the heat energy and they will experience various motions. They move. The various motions can be divided into three types of motions. They are number one, translational motion, number two, rotational motion, number three, vibrational motion. See, translational motion means translational motion means the molecule as a whole moving. Say, for example, I take this uh, rubber band, I think, are you able to see this? Suppose if this is a molecule, it is moving here and there as such. The molecule can move either along x direction or along y direction or along z direction if it is moving in any diagonal direction, its motion can be resolved into three coordinates. The three Cartesian coordinates. Suppose I have already explained this. You can see, see look here. Translational degrees of freedom means an atom is considered as a mass point, as a point mass. See, so it can move either along x direction or along y direction or along z direction. If it is moving in any of the diagonal, then its motion can be resolved into three components. So I can say it has three translational degrees of freedom. See, if the velocity is a c, the c square equal to cx square that is its velocity along x direction cy square its velocity along y direction cz square its velocity along z direction therefore c square is equal to cx square plus cy square plus cz square or i can say the kinetic energy of the molecule half m c square the kinetic energy of the molecule is equal to the kinetic energy along x direction kinetic energy along y direction kinetic energy along z direction suppose if you take an atomic gas a single atom the rotational motion 
is assumed as the rotation of a sphere about the axis which passes through the center of the mass it is assumed it is assumed as the rotation of an atom about an axis which passes through center of the mass which is shown as shown in the diagram actually for an atomic gas atomic gas means uh, say for example helium is an atomic gas all the noble gases are atomic gases so it is a single atom a atom has a center of mass and i am assuming an axis passing through the center of mass i want to rotate this molecule about this center of mass actually in order to rotate the molecule a negligible amount of energy has to be spent but a translational motion has comparatively higher energy as a whole you are shifting the molecule the atom is moving in any direction as a whole unit which needs at least some energy but rotation of an atom about the axis which passes through the center of mass it needs very little energy almost negligible energy therefore what is happening i can assume for rotation of an atom practically no energy is required when you see the rotational degrees of freedom so for a mono atomic gas there is no rotational degree of freedom it has only translational degree of freedom for a mono atomic gas rotational degree of freedom is not there because when the atom is rotated about an axis which passes through the center of mass the energy spent is negligible hence a mono atomic gas has only 3 degrees of freedom and the 3 degrees of freedom are three translational degrees of freedom that is their translational motion along x y and z directions now if you take the rotational degrees of freedom of a diatomic molecule i'm i'm taking a diatomic molecule like a hydrogen see diatomic molecule if i assume the bond connecting the two atoms is along the x axis that is what is the diagram says say this is the x axis the molecule the bond is along x axis means i can rotate the molecule by taking y axis as an axis or z axis as an axis so this one axis x axis rotation about the x axis again the energy spent is negligible because the moment of inertia for this angle for this axis is negligible almost zero therefore rotational energy will also become zero so i can assume the rotation of the molecule in the two perpendicular axes say y and z so along the y direction it has to be rotated like this along the z direction it has to be rotated like this you can see the you can see now i i want to explain this look here suppose this is the molecule diatomic molecule you can take any small model like even a small pen as the diatomic molecule say for example i take this pen uh, see this is this is a diatomic molecule means this is the x axis this is an atom and this is an atom the two atoms are connected through this bond so any rotation about this bond this rotation practically does not require any energy because moment of inertia is very less see this rotation but if you want to rotate the molecule like this in a perpendicular axis like this it needs some energy or it has some appreciable moment of inertia about this axis now i am going to rotate the molecule about this axis see another perpendicular axis so these two axes have some appreciable moment of inertia therefore 
the linear molecule has two degrees of freedom two rotational degrees of freedom actually three axes all the three axes can be assumed as the rotational axis but along one axis moment of inertia is negligible therefore that axis the rotation about that axis is completely neglected hence the rotation can take place only about two axes hence the linear molecule has a two degrees of freedom that is two rotational degrees of freedom whereas non linear molecules rotation can be assumed in all the three axes therefore non linear molecule has three degrees of freedom three rotational degrees of freedom here one here one here one so i can say there are three translational degrees of freedom and for linear molecules two rotational degrees of freedom for non linear molecules three translational degrees of freedom and three rotational degrees of freedom are there hence i want to find out the vibrational degrees of freedom look at the vibrational degrees of freedom it is very important and you have to understand thoroughly what is this vibrational degrees of freedom look here suppose this is something like this rubber band at the end of this rubber band there is an atom of mass m1 at the end of this rubber band there is another atom with a mass m2 now these two atoms can go away and come closer the coming closer is called a compression state it's called a compression state going away is called extension state so it is something like a spring so the molecule it extends compresses extends compresses and the extension and the compression is going on continuously like this this motion is called vibrational motion and the frequency is called vibrational frequency for a diatomic molecule it can vibrate in only one direction like this hence this frequency is called fundamental vibrational frequency actually this vibrational motion is of simple harmonic type what is a simple harmonic motion when the bond is slightly stretched stretched a restoring force is developed in the bond which is a proportional to the extent of stretching and is opposite in direction that is force is directly proportional to x or force is equal to minus k x where minus k that k is called the force constant so what happens look here this is the equilibrium position it is neither stretched nor compressed while i am stretching the energy is stored in the bond in the form of a potential energy similarly when it is compressed the energy is stored in the molecule in the form of potential energy so what happens you stretch the energy becomes a potential and this a potential energy now actually i have already told you any system will tend towards minimization of potential energy so it tries to minimize the potential energy by bringing them closer when they come closer they go beyond the equilibrium position to compress while compression again potential energy is developing and to minimize the potential energy it relaxes and the relax and relaxation goes beyond the equilibrium position and goes to stretching again it becomes a potential therefore what is what it's mean in the compression state or in the extended state the energy is stored in the molecule in the form of potential energy but at the equilibrium position it is totally kinetic so there is a continual interchange there is an energy change from potential to kinetic and kinetic to potential this is interchange of potential and kinetic energies are continuously taking place in a molecule but the total energy of the system remains a constant this is called the law of conservation of energy there is a constant interchange of potential and kinetic energies 
but the total energy of the molecule remains a constant in quantum mechanics you say it as hamiltonian function h operator is equal to t operator plus v operator where t is a kinetic energy operator v is a potential energy operator h is the total energy operator which is called the hamiltonian operator so the total energy will remain constant but sometimes it is totally potential sometimes it is totally kinetic in between it is partially kinetic and partially potential but the sum will be always a constant so this is the vibrational motion so when you take a polyatomic molecule i am going to the polyatomic molecule polyatomic molecule each bond can vibrate see the diatomic molecule can only be linear you cannot assume any other structure for a monoatomic molecule even you cannot assume a rotational axis monoatomic gases they undergo only translation motion if at all rotation is assumed rotation about any axis which passes through the center of mass has the least moment of inertia or negligible amount of energy has to be spent to make the molecule rotate in the case of diatomic molecule it is always linear all diatomic molecules are linear so the linear molecules can undergo rotation about only two axes the third axis which is the axis of the bond the line the bond about that axis the rotation needs very little energy therefore that rotation is omitted hence a mono atomic gas has only three translational degrees of freedom a diatomic molecule has three translational degrees of freedom plus two rotational degrees of freedom and plus i am going to find out the number of vibrational degrees of freedom see for a polyatomic molecules if n is the number of atoms present in the molecule one atom can have three degrees of freedom rotational translational vibrational three degrees of freedom so if n number of atoms are present totally the molecule can have 3 n degrees of freedom see each atom has 3 degrees of freedom if a molecule has n number of atoms 3 into n degrees of freedom are there this 3 n degrees of freedom they are composed of translational degrees of freedom rotational degrees of freedom and the vibrational degrees of freedom all put together for a polyatomic molecule total number of degrees of freedom is 3 n now watch closely you have to understand thoroughly so vibrational degrees of freedom we have to calculate you have to calculate the vibrational degrees of freedom vibrational degrees of freedom is total degrees of freedom minus translational and rotational degrees of freedom see totally you have 10 items idli vada dosa totally you have 10 items you don't know how many dosa is are there so what to do total 10 minus number of vada and the number of idli will give you the number of dosa that is the calculation here so total degrees of freedom is 3n you subtract the number of translational degrees of freedom and the number of rotational degrees of freedom what remains is the vibrational degrees of freedom so for a linear molecule if n is the number of atoms present in the linear molecule then 3n is the total number of degrees of freedom minus three translational degrees of freedom minus two rotational degrees of freedom why two because rotation about that axis which passes through the molecular the bond is 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 neglected because of the least moment of inertia therefore for a linear molecule there are 3n minus 5 vibrational degrees of freedom for a non linear molecule what happens 
there are totally three and degrees of freedom and three translational degrees minus three rotational degrees what are the three rotation rotation about all the three axes because appreciable amount of moment of inertia is observed for non linear molecules about in all the three axes hence the number of vibrational degrees of freedom for a non linear molecule is 3n minus 6 so it is a 3n minus 5 for linear molecules and 3n minus 6 for non linear molecule and these degrees are called internal degrees of freedom or normal modes of vibration it is very important they are called internal degrees of freedom or normal modes of vibration what is this normal mode of vibration so normal mode of vibration it is the molecular motion in which all the atoms in the molecule vibrate with the same frequency and the atoms pass through their equilibrium position simultaneously every atom will vibrate every atom will vibrate with a particular frequency if all the atoms in the molecule vibrate with the same frequency you see they are going away and they are coming up closer and they are going away they have to cross the equilibrium position equilibrium position means if the bond is not stretched if the bond is assumed to be at rest what is the position of the atoms that is called the equilibrium position so if the molecules they cross the equilibrium position at the same time they are crossing their own equilibrium position at the same time if these two conditions are satisfied in a vibration then that vibration is called normal mode of vibration it is called a normal mode of vibration so for linear molecules there are 3n minus 5 vibrational degrees of freedom for non linear molecules there are 3n minus 6 vibrational degrees of freedom yeah there are three types of motions one is a translational motion which is the motion of the entire molecule as such second one is rotational motion where the molecule is rotated about any axis any of the three axes for an atomic gas if you assume any axis which passes through the center of mass the moment of inertia is very less or negligible amount of energy is spent therefore i can say for an atomic gas only 3 degrees of freedom and they are only three translational degrees of freedom for a linear molecule diatomic molecule diatomic molecules can only be linear these linear molecules have three degrees of freedom in translational motion and when you wanted to rotate the molecule about the three axes that one axis in which the bond lies that axis is neglected because of the very least energy of rotation so it has a two degrees of rotational freedom two rotational degrees of freedom so if you sum up the translational motion and the rotational motion totally five degrees of freedom so what remains is the vibrational degrees of freedom so if n number of atoms are present then 3n number of degrees of freedom are totally available therefore the vibrational degrees of freedom in a linear molecule is a 3n minus 5 but for a non linear molecule rotations are possible in all the three axes hence three translational three rotational totally six degrees of freedom so the vibrational degrees of freedom is equal to 3n minus 6 these vibrational degrees of freedom are called internal degrees of freedom or normal modes of vibration normal mode of vibration means the molecular motion should take place in such a way all the atoms are vibrating with the same frequency and also all the atoms they pass through their equilibrium positions simultaneously so this is the condition so 
the next slide look here i am taking two examples and when you see these two examples you can understand what is a normal mode vibration and what is all these things see stretching can be watch closely see stretching can be symmetrical or asymmetrical symmetrical means both the bonds or the extension is the same on both sides and the compression is the same on both sides asymmetrical means one side is is extruded other side it is compressed or something or in the different levels the stretching is taking place in different levels similarly bending can be divided into two types one is called in plane bending and another one is out plane bending see these vibrations they take place with the energy 650 to 4000 cm inverse of frequency range so 650 to 4000 centimeter inverse range now look here when i compare these two molecules you will understand the entire uh, uh, vibrational degrees of freedom look here i take a water molecule what is the shape of water molecule it is bent structured why it is bent structured the oxygen in the water molecule is sp3 hybridized and the two hybridized orbitals are used for bonding with the hydrogen and the two more orbitals they have the lone pair of electrons and because the sp3 hybridized orbitals they are all projecting towards the corners of the tetrahedron in water molecule the two corners of the tetrahedron are occupied by the hydrogen the other two ends are occupied by the lone pairs and because of the lone pair bond pair interaction water molecule is bent so it is a non linear structure how many atoms are there three atoms are there so how many vibrations are possible nine degrees of freedom are possible totally so totally nine degrees of freedom so three translational degrees of freedom as it is a non linear molecule three rotational degrees of freedom totally six so when you subtract six from nine what remains is three therefore it has three vibrational modes or three normal vibrational modes or three vibrational degrees of freedom they are number one symmetric stretching look here symmetric stretching means all the three stretches they take place simultaneously and also to the same extent the extent to which this OH bond expands to the same extent this OH bond also expands this is called a symmetric stretching this is one vibration second vibration is asymmetric stretching which means if one OH is compressed the other OH is extended or the extension is of different levels for both the bonds if that takes place it is called asymmetric stretching next one is symmetric bending symmetric bending means these two hydrogens go away and oxygen comes here or these two come here and these two go there this is something like this i can explain this with some model you take this stapler as a model i am compressing this like this to the same extent this is called a symmetric bending actually in organic chemistry you may study this as scissoring scissoring or rocking or wagging these are all the various uh, vibrational motions you will study in organic chemistry but here what you can see this is called symmetric bending they bend symmetrically but if you take a carbon dioxide molecule it is a linear molecule so linear molecule means there are three atoms so three into three nine degrees of freedom totally out of the nine there are three translational degrees of freedom and three rotational degrees of freedom out of which one rotational degree is neglected because that molecular axis through the molecular axis when the mo when the molecule is tried to when you try to rotate the moment of inertia is negligible therefore it has only two rotational degrees of freedom as it is a linear molecule hence the vibrational degrees of freedom is a 3n minus 5 therefore it has a four vibrational degrees of freedom what are they number one is as usual as in the case of water molecule symmetric stretching asymmetric stretching see one carbon oxygen is 
compressed and one carbon oxygen is extended asymmetric stretching it is in it need not be compression and expansion even expansion itself if it takes place in different lengths it is also asymmetric stretching and also bending in plane see suppose if if the bending is assumed in the plane of your screen it's all taking place on the plane carbon moves down oxygen goes up this is bending in plane suppose if a carbon comes to the front from your monitor oxygen goes to the back at the back of the monitor look here now it is called the bending out of plane see this one is bending in plane this one is the bending out of plane actually speaking these two bending are having the equal energy that we will discuss at a later stage but here the bending is taking place in the out of plane here the bending is in plane therefore totally four types of vibrations here so they are the normal modes of vibration so this is about the degrees of freedom i think with this i can complete are you able to understand